Hello folks and welcome back. I hope you are having a fantastic start of your semester. I know I am. Uh, in this lecture we're going to start diving into the first chapter of uh, Pierce's book. Of course that's the Millennials Playbook to Adulting. And I hope you enjoyed the book. It, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty easy to read but I think I always uh, want to uh, to see if we can dive in a little bit deeper, see if we can relate some of this content uh, to our own experiences, our own lives, or uh, connect it to our own goals. And of course, I like to share my uh, experiences with you uh, as well, and hopefully you will share yours with me. You know, this is a two-way uh, street that we're building here. Uh, anyway, let's get into it, and probably the best place to start, I think, is just to think about some people that we may know in real life or... Uh, perhaps from television shows. Uh, you know, think about The Office, <laughs> one of my favorite shows. <laughs> and, you know, I think about people on that show who they're they're unquestionably intelligent. You know, they've they've got the mental aptitude, uh, super intelligent, <laughs> gifted, talented, uh, whatever you want to call them. They they know what they're doing. They've got uh, you know they've got what it takes. Uh, however. Uh, when it comes to what we'd call, just call even the most basic people skills, uh, being able to articulate, uh, being able to carry on, a, a, for lack of a better word, an adult conversation, uh, you know, they, they, they have real trouble. I mean, it's very difficult for them to uh, make new friends, uh, to talk to people that they don't know, uh, the kind of people who... You know, they're always rubbing people the wrong way is one of those expressions. You know, they're always wondering. They're always saying things like, you know, I don't know why you're upset. Uh, wh wh why are you having this reaction? It's puzzling to me. You know, I, I didn't mean to uh, offend you. Or I, I don't really understand why everybody is, uh, you know, doesn't want to sit with me <laughs> at the table or whatever. You know, could it be something I said? Uh, you know, those sort of people. And they're not... They're not necessarily bad people. Uh, they just tend to lack these, uh, you know, these, these social skills, uh, this etiquette. And you probably know somebody like that. Uh, I know too. But the question is, what can you do? How can you help them? Or if you're like, if you're like that yourself, and I definitely put myself in this category. You know, trust me on that. Uh, you know, how can you begin to develop those skills so you can get out of this? Uh, you know, uh, this problem or help other people. You know, at some point you'll be managing people more than likely. And, uh, you know, you'll be dealing with some of these issues from the other side of the table and, you know, trying to articulate, you know, some uh, behaviors that you see, trying to help somebody uh, basically to help themselves to get to that next level. And I'm going to show you some examples here uh, in a second. Actually, let me do that now. So just to show uh, that this is uh, what Pierce is saying. You know, she's not just making this up. Uh, this is uh, real life. And I could tell you just from my own experiences, I think I've mentioned already, that I have uh, probably interviewed well over a, a hundred uh, computer game or computer uh, uh, engineers, uh, programmers. Um, did I say computer? I meant video game. <laughs> uh, video game developers. Well, some computer professionals. But uh, basically professionals at all levels, at all uh you know, uh, branches, categories of the uh, video games industry. And, of course, that's an industry that attracts a lot of uh, young people uh, fresh out of college. They want to go work. They want to go work for Bethesda. They, they want to work for Activision. They want to go work for BioWare. Uh, you know, these companies that grew up, uh, Bungie, you know, they grew up playing these games. They want to work for the companies. And I've actually talked to some of the, uh, the hiring managers and, and the CEOs of some of those uh, companies, and they repeat, you know, they're, they're telling me, this is one of the reasons I wanted to teach this class. And, uh, you know, I was excited about the uh, professional communication program because this is the stuff that these employers are telling me that their new people lack. And they're like, why aren't you teaching this stuff? <laughs> You're a professor. Why don't you teach this stuff? Uh, so I'm like, you know, that's a good question. Why aren't we teaching this stuff? I mean, maybe we should actually start. <laughs> uh, to wit, you know, we have this, uh, this little course here. Uh, but look, I just did a quick search for like, uh, I forget exactly what I typed into Google, something like uh, problems with new hires or problems with uh, new college students. 
And, you know, boom, it's just article after article like this. Uh, employees say, this is not even sure what SHRM is. Let's see if we can see what that is. Um, this is a HR Daily, so Human Resources. Employee Relations column. Uh, look at the headline. Employers say students aren't learning the soft skills in college. And, other, and the soft skills would be things that are, uh, well, there's a list there. Critical thinking, teamwork, speaking, and writing. Uh, so it's basically those social skills. It's not the technical stuff you need for the job. You know, this is a problem, again, coming back to the video game developers. They, they say, Matt, we, we get lots of people, lots of uh, young people, and not just young people, uh, but we get a lot of uh, fresh college grads, and, you know, they really know their programming. They know that C-sharp, or they know how to run the databases. They, they do the information security <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. Uh, but, man, uh, they just, uh, you know, they're, they're just going crazy on Twitter, or they've uh, alienated themselves from the rest of the department, or they, 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 they just don't have uh, even, like, a, a basic... Uh, Workplace protocols, you know, I guess you could say, you know, if like <laughs> if the meeting starts at one o'clock, you know, they're showing up at like one uh, fifteen or one twenty, uh, wondering what, you know, what the problem is uh, with that. So there's a lot of uh, issues all around these, what uh, Pierce calls adulting. And this this article, they give you some, yeah, here we go. Uh, this article includes a infographic. And this is, is about the, what the employers are saying. Let's see, employees want job candidates with uniquely human skills, in other words, PECOM majors, <laughs> but finding those candidates isn't easy. Well, again, uh, just look for PECOM majors. Uh, anyway, uh, nearly three in four employers say they have a hard time finding graduates with the soft skills their companies need. Let's see if we can uh, dive into this a little bit. How would you describe the process of finding qualified applicants with critical thinking skills? So 64%, uh, 33%, 3%. What is the... Oh, <laughs> so 64% say it's very or somewhat difficult. And let's look over here at the communication one, 54%. Uh, the listening skills and interpersonal skills are both clocking in, looks like around 55%. Uh, so think about what this graphic is telling you. And this is something I, I really emphasize when I'm talking to uh, anybody that's studying engineering or computer science or programming, uh, anything like that, but really, you know, across the board, um, anybody in design, basically anybody who's not already doing some type of communication major. Uh, I say that there's a lot of uh, folks out there who do have very strong, very, very strong technical, mathematical, you know, all those sorts of skills. But if they don't have the soft skills uh, that this, is, this uh, graphic is, is talking about here, that can basically render that moot. I mean, it doesn't really do you a lot of good uh, to have this brilliant idea or to be uh, extremely gifted. Uh, in terms of programming or what the, whatever the case may be. If you can't articulate that vision, uh, if you can't talk about what you do in a way to interest other people, to get them to invest in you, uh, you know, same thing even like with the job interview, right? You could have fantastic qualifications, you know, you've, you've a lot of experience, a lot of kudos uh, to your name, but if you don't know how to uh, come, come across well in that job interview, it can just jeopardize the whole thing. Uh, you know, look at this. Human skills are in demand. Communication skills, 77. I mean, you see why I wanted to teach this course, right? 77% uh, uh, communication skills. And the listening skills are 75%. And I, I just want to say this. Maybe we'll get to talk about this more uh, in the coming uh, lectures. But the listening skills tends to get underestimated. Uh, people think anybody can listen. You know, you just stop talking. But really, it's, it's hard to be a good listener. It's not just something that comes effortlessly to most people, especially if the material or the person speaking is not necessarily the most engaging speaker. <laughs> like really boring content or whatever. Uh, it can take a lot of uh, skill and discipline you know, to really just sit there and you know, take in what is being said, process it, not be you know, always uh, drifting off 
mentally taking a mental vacation uh, or uh, trying to jump in too quick and interrupt the person you know things of that sort are not really referring back to that earlier part of the conversation when you want to move it forward uh, so this is significant as well and I dare say you know I try to do more listening than talking you know of course not in a <laughs> lecture being the exception <laughs> you know but when I'm interviewing people uh, for Matt chat and I've been complimented on this many many times some of these you know some of these folks are basically multi many many times over millionaires <laughs> And they will tell me, you know, that look, you're like the first person who's ever really just sat down and listened to me, and you know, and let me, uh, you know, give answers to the questions you're asking. And when you uh, re respond back, you're like, you know, it's it's clear you've done the research, you've you're taking in what I've said and uh, following up on it. So you're not just saying that to brag. I mean, I'm just applying the same stuff I'm teaching in, in classes like this. But the, you know, the value of active listening is just as important as being able to talk well. You might be a great speaker, but are you a good listener? Those two things aren't the same. Uh, the two different, they're related, <laughs> uh, but slightly uh, different skills. So anyway, that's just one. Let's go on. Let's look at some. I mean, there's a hundred of these. Inside higher ed. Overconfident students, uh, dubious employers. Oh, yes, you know, you get the new. And some of you, I, I believe I saw in some of the, the comments were, you know, I've emailed a few of you, and you, you said that maybe you, you are retired. You're coming back to school and want to do a PCOM. Uh, or you're at some midpoint of your career, and you've, you've got a lot of experience hiring people, uh, uh, working with people. So I, I know this stuff is, is true just from talking to you. You may know it. But, but other people may not be you know, quite there yet in terms of their career. But <laughs> uh, basically the problem is, and I link this to something... Um, I think it's called something like the YouTube problem. And I forget the exact terminology. I'm pretty sure there's a TED talk or two about it. Uh, but there's this phenomenon where people will, uh, some people, I mean, just back up and start over. <laughs> so some people enjoy watching YouTube videos uh, that tell them how to do things. Uh, like here's a YouTube video about, oh, I don't know, how to uh, plant uh, <laughs> soybeans. <laughs> or here's a tomato um how to plant tomatoes and grow them in the hydroponics. You know, just making stuff up. Or how to fix a flat. Yeah, let's just uh, go with that one. Uh, so let's say you've never really, you've never fixed a flat tire on your vehicle, if you have a vehicle. Never done it. Uh, you've you never even uh, seen anybody do it in real life. But <laughs> you feel like maybe I should learn how to do that just in case it ever happens to me, right? Common, seems like a pretty good common sense thing to do. Uh, so you go to YouTube and you watch some videos about you know, how do you change a tire? And the phenomenon is that people who do that tend to get this inflated sense of, uh, oh, yes, I know how to do that. You know, if they're asked, hey, can you change a tire? Yes, yes, I know I know how to. They're very confident that they can do it, uh, even though they haven't actually, you know, ever done it. <laughs> and when they did the study, they found that the people who had never watched a YouTube video it did just as well at, at the actual task as the people who had watched those videos. <laughs> so it made no difference. It was just a, it made them feel like they could do it. Uh, but they really, uh, when it came down to actually doing it, there was a, a big deficit. You know, and the same thing here. You know, employers always complain. You know, talk to any manager ever. <laughs> they will tell you this. <laughs> and when somebody new comes in, and it uh, feels like they already know everything and they're not willing to listen to the manager or, you know, they're disrespecting all their colleagues. You know, they, they think they, they know it all uh, when really if they would practice those listening skills and not be quite so arrogant, you know, they, they could get along. It's not just about getting along, uh, but certainly they could get along better and, uh, you know, ultimately do their job better. Let's see what we have here. There's a figure. Employer versus student perception of proficiency in career readiness competencies by the percentage of respondents. So these are uh, employers who are working with recent college grads. So let's look at this. Uh, professionalism, work ethic. Wow. 42.5, uh, less than half of the employers say they're proficient. <laughs> So think about what that means. So more than half of these folks, they feel like are unprofessional or 
lack of basic work ethic. You know, they're not coming in to work on time, maybe not even coming in to work at all. They're saying they're going to do something and not doing it. You know, maybe even uh, stealing things, uh, being dishonest. A lot of this comes down to uh, not stealing. I mean, sometimes it is stealing stuff or money, but it's also uh, considered unethical to steal company time, uh, which would be could be something like playing a <laughs> Candy Crush or you know looking at Facebook all day when you're supposed to be uh, you know I don't know monitoring something. Uh, so anyway, 42.5% uh, say they lack those competencies. Now, the percent of students who considered themselves proficient, 89.4%. Boom. So almost 90% of the students feel like, hey, I'm professional. I'm very, got a great work ethic. <laughs> and yet when it comes down to it, uh, you know, less than half. I mean, this is really, and look at the, I mean, my God, look at this uh, oral and written communications one. Uh, 41.6, so even lower, 41.6% of employers say that the recent grads either can't speak well or they can't write well, or, or both, I guess. Uh, and then if we look over here, this, I guess the students are a little bit more modest here. So only <laughs> about 80% uh, say that they are got strong uh, oral and writing skills. You know, we, we could blame this on the students, but, you know, the truth is with grade inflation, you know, I won't get into that uh, here, but uh, it's a combination of that, I think, and the fact that a lot of the writing and speaking that you do in a in a college doesn't tend to necessarily be the same style or the same uh, sort of things you'll be doing uh, in the workplace. You know, we, that's why we have, a I think, one of the goals of a PCOM is to try to bridge that gap so that you're not just uh, writing in a way that would be suitable for a college professor. Uh, but also in a way that would be suitable for a client or for a manager. Uh, you want to work in HR, uh, etc. Uh, so just one more of these. This is from the Harvard Business Review. And this one is the biggest hurdles that recent graduates face entering the workforce. So it's kind of uh, from the other angle. And I'll just look at the uh, first bit here. Some are exhausted, exhausted, lost, anxious. Everything's a struggle. These are just some of the ways that 54 recent college grads interviewed by researchers describe their experience transitioning from college to the professional world. Many young people felt disoriented, they're confused, dissatisfied, and in many cases overwhelmed with the real world. Uh, some have attributed these to millennials, young people. However, uh, the researchers argue that the main reason young people struggle isn't generational, it's cultural. Uh, and so you could, you know, look at this article again. It's on the Harvard uh, Business Review. Uh, but essentially, it's uh, just confirming what uh, Pierce says, you know, in, in this chapter, and we'll uh, carry on. So <laughs> uh, but basically, this is what this is how Pierce puts it. And she's talking about a good friend of hers. You know, again, one of these people, whip smart, super intelligent, very skilled, very talented, but lacking. <laughs> in those uh, people skills, or the soft skills. No one had taught him to work with and function professionally and socially with older generations. No one had taught him the basics of functioning as an adult in <laughs> an adult-dominated uh, world. You know, put a little picture there, I think it's the point across. Uh, okay, so enough of that. What can you do about it? And Pierce, I, I, like, I love the way she puts things. Very good writer. Extremely articulate, very great uh, soft skills. If you want to study her as a model, you could do a lot worse. Uh, here she just says, you are the CEO of Me Incorporated and the chief marketing officer for the brand called <laughs> you. So you might almost start thinking about yourself as sort of a company. You know, if we think about companies that you like, uh, companies that you don't like, you almost think about them as people. They say uh, I think even legally, to some extent, a corporation is a person in the eyes of the, of the law anyway. Uh, but you might just think about yourself, you know, as a company and uh, thinking about what you, uh, your skill set, uh, where you would like to be. And this would be especially true, I think, for freelance freelancers or for uh, contractors or consultants, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but I think Pierce's point is this applies across the board to, to everybody. So brands matter. 
and your personal brand should matter to you because it is how someone would describe you when you are not there. Uh, so I really like the way she puts this. So you think, what do you mean by personal brand? You know, I keep hearing this personal brand. What, what, what is that? <laughs> well, it's just how, how someone would describe you when you are not there. So you know, what, do you, <laughs> what do you think about this Dr. Barton? <laughs> and then whatever that person says, you know, assuming I'm not there to uh, listen in, uh, that's basically my personal brand. So if you hear, oh, yeah, it's a, it's a great chorus. He's, he's really fun, really engaging. Uh, never boring. <laughs> you can say that's um, uh, the personal brand. Right? That's what, where the real value uh, lies. You want it to be positive. Uh, she says, we all have a personal brand uh, that needs to be created and uh, protected. And we'll get into that <coughs> notion of protection uh, here in a minute. And let's see, who's this? Jeff Bezos, yeah, the CEO of Amazon. You know, it says there that he's the Earth's wealthiest person but I'm pretty sure I just read the other day that um, oh god who's the Tesla Elon Musk I'm wanting to say I just read that he has actually surpassed uh, Bezos as the richest person but apparently Pierce got that from Bezos your brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room okay so there's a little writing activity how millennials are described in one word. No, this, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little sidebar I liked. <laughs> uh, almost there to the uh, writing prompt. It looks like this. Uh, so how are people describing millennials? Or you could just say uh, new college students that are entering the workforce. They say they're in, they feel like these uh, folks are entitled, impatient, too obsessed with technology. In other words, they're always you know doing this, looking at a phone, instead of looking at you, uh, interacting in a face-to-face -face fashion, um, pampered, okay, uh, self-absorbed, and lazy. Now, you might be bristling a little bit and saying, I don't like this. You know, I, I'm not any of these things. <laughs> uh, all I know is I feel like I probably fit each one of those. You know, when you really get down to it, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty well described uh, by those. I just, you know, hope I can do something about it and always working on self-improvement, trying to find ways to... Uh, you know, not just be a better professor, a better writer, but a better person. Uh, hopefully, you're in that. You're on the team uh, along with me, or you're sharing in that effort. So let's try to be honest about our own uh, shortcomings and just be focusing on on the future and what we might be able to do about those uh, things. Whether they're accurate perceptions or not, we certainly don't want people to perceive us in those ways. All right, an assignment then. Here we go. See what I mean? It's got the two lines on it. Anyway. Uh, write down three uh, three words or phrases that you would like your current co-workers or future co-workers to use to describe you. Okay, and then moving on from that, she gives a couple of strategies here in this first chapter. She'll get more into this, of course, uh, later. But just right off the top, she says there are two things you can do uh, that will begin to get you where you want to be. Uh, one is, you know, asking about, you know, if somebody tells you to do something there in the workplace, uh, you can try to find out how does this task fit into the bigger picture, you know, or, or how how is this role that I'm playing fitting into the, you know, bigger uh, project that's being undertaken here at the university. Uh, you know, no employer wants you thinking that you're just getting busy work or that you're objecting to the work or that you feel like the work is unimportant or that they're not very good at assigning tasks. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, it can show a lot of initiative. It can show that, you know, you desire to be part of this team. You know, if you're really showing interest in the work, uh, you're trying to see how it all uh, fits together. In other words, you're kind of thinking more like a potential manager uh, than somebody who just wants to know, like, look, just tell me exactly what you want me to do, and I'll do it. <laughs> you know, you don't necessarily, you know, that's fine, you know, you're getting the job done, you know, but the point is, if you're showing more interest in sort of the bigger picture, like the, uh, you know, business as a whole, you know, things will, will start to happen. I mean, I remember my first job was at a steakhouse, and I was the washing dishes, basically, <laughs> sort of the steakhouse, but you know, sometimes the manager or the owner would, would pop in and we'd have a little chat. And I was always, I was very curious, even at that age, 
of just the what it was like to run a business. You know, so I was always just talking to him about, you know, how, how are things? Or how did you get into the steak business? And you know, how did you uh, how did you learn all this stuff running the the restaurant? And he really, uh, you know, he really took to me uh, for that reason. You know, and he was he would sometimes uh, if I was, if it was kind of a lull. You know, I say, hey, come over here. You know, I'm doing this, uh, and I'm going to be preparing these uh, steaks, or I'm going to be doing this or that. And you might, uh, you might want to watch this and, and learn. So I thought that was probably more valuable than the little paycheck I was getting was just getting that sort of, uh, you know, uh, real life you know, information. And it was just simply by asking a few questions, showing some interest in the, you know, the uh, that employer's business. And you can, of course, do the same thing. Uh, okay, social media. Uh, this is where... Let me, let me just read the quote and then we'll think about this. So she says, I don't think it's your employer's business what you do in your personal time. But I do think an employer has the right to question what type of professional judgment you may have based on how you decide to protect Excuse me, uh, your personal life. Uh, so what she's talking about there... Uh, it's a big concern for a lot of people, especially college students that have grown up using uh, social media. So some of you have probably been on, you know, it's kind of scary for me to think about this, but you know, there's probably people out there that have been <laughs> on Facebook their whole lives, <laughs> you know, at this point, or at least a, a good chunk of their life. So they got stuff going back before, even before high school, you know, uh, really personal stuff that might embarrass them. And it's just all there online. It's wide open, and anybody can go there and, and find it. Now, her point there is that now I agree with this. It's really not the employer's business. You know, you've got your time on the clock, and as long as you're doing a good job and you're, you know, representing the company well while you're on the clock, uh, that should be good enough. Uh, but it is true, and it's in the real world, it's going to happen, right? If, if there's some kind of stuff you're doing. Uh, while you're not on the clock, you, know, you might be off on vacation somewhere, and but all these photos are emerging, all this questionable, questionable stuff is uh, being uh, circulated. And what it does, it can reflect badly, not just on your personal brand, but on that on on that company as a whole, right? The, you know, somebody's looking at this and saying, "I can't believe that this company is hiring." You know, people like this. I mean, look at what this person is doing here uh, in this photo or, or in this video. I mean, this is abhorrent behavior. Uh, you know, this, uh, I'm going to call up the uh, uh, this company and tell them they need to fire. You know, the, uh, this person is just, just too far out of line. Now, that, that's an extreme scenario, uh, but you probably know that that sort of thing does uh, does happen. Probably will continue to happen. Uh, so some things your employer does not want to see about you online. Uh, inappropriate or provocative photos being probably one of the biggest ones. Um, photos with drugs or excessive alcohol use. You know, and of course this depends on the line of work. I mean, imagine if you were a pilot for like United Airlines. <laughs> you got all these photos. Uh, we were at parties just with, you know, with a little lampshade on your head uh, or passed out somewhere uh, drunk. You know, that, that could make people actually not want to fly on that plane uh, if they think this, you know, this is what sort of thing the, the pilots get up to. So they might actually get reprimanded or, or, or at the very least told to take those photos down. And You, know, you, you don't want to be always the one that's having to apologize and <laughs> say, I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking. Because, again, that reflects on your reputation. Uh, of course, discriminatory comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, here's a good one. Uh, comments insulting a colleague or a previous employer. This is something I really stress in 332 when we're talking about resumes and job interviews. You know, let's say you uh, had a job you really hated, you quit it, you know, and you're trying to find another job in, in the same field, and, you know, the question comes up, uh, why did you leave that company? Or what was going, you know, what, what happened there? And then you start in, like, bashing it. Well, that manager was a, you know, fill in the blank, and I hated my coworkers and... Man, all the customers were irritating, and you just started kind of ranting about this. Or maybe it's like legitimate complaints, but you know, all, you know, it's just like a lot of negative uh, stuff you're saying there about the uh, 
uh, this former uh, workplace. And it's just, no matter how true it is, it, you're usually better off uh, just either minimizing that or at least not uh, going on about it. Because uh, what can tend to happen is people will assume, well, if they're saying that about that company, uh, they're going to be saying similar stuff about this company. Uh, so it's just better off uh, to keep it to yourself or, again, make sure this is not publicly available uh, somewhere that's easily uh, found. Uh, highly unprofessional screen names. You know, I, I've seen plenty of those. Uh, so just be mindful. You know, your Husky Net email is typically fine. Uh, MD Barton, if it was me. Uh, but I've certainly seen some. I'm not going to uh, say them here, but I've seen some... Uh, questionable shall we say screen names you don't know what that, you know it doesn't really cost anything to make a new uh, get a new email address or a, a new username uh, obviously criminal activities or behaviors you know you could actually get arrested sometimes if you're posting uh, you know photos like that uh, confidential information that belongs to a former or current employer and then, uh, yeah, this is probably the big one for our day. <laughs> All these extreme political views. Oh, my God. I am so tired of politics. I, I just, I hate politics. <laughs> uh, but, man, I don't know what it is. Um, but, yeah, I mean, some of my colleagues, and some of these folks are, you know, decades older than me, 50, 60 years old, long great careers you know but they're just on facebook or twitter just saying stuff i just like wow, i can't believe uh they just said that you know that's probably going to come back to bite them you know at some point so just me me personally i uh, i don't do the politics you know i keep it off my twitter and facebook you know i keep it completely out of there <laughs> you know if it's personal if it's private conversation that's fine but i just don't want something online somewhere where uh people can find that uh, however i did feel obligated to post the uh, a little screenshot there from a, a little photo from hamilton because of course aaron burr it always reminds me of aaron burr's song where he talks about talk less smile more never let anybody know what you're <laughs> against or what you're for <laughs> you know in a sense i kind of feel like i'm more like aaron burr than i am hamilton in that sense uh, i because i mean it's just it does tend to get you uh further i guess or make you make fewer enemies if you're not always saying uh, out there with some kind of extreme view. Uh, on the other hand, you know, you can know he's, he's the bad guy <laughs> in Hamilton. So I don't know how I feel about that. All right, so quick assignment here. Uh, Google yourself and identify anything online that you feel could negatively impact your brand. And I guess it's, so you have something to write about. You don't have to go into detail about what you found. Uh, just tell me what, you know, are you, do you find anything that you're concerned about? And if so, are you taking some steps to take it down or to put it behind a, a password? Uh, let's see what we have here. Oh, yeah, just, just how to be careful. Yeah, I say try not to talk bad about anyone. I always regret it. You know, it's just you get mad about, you get mad at somebody and you write that email or you post that thing on Twitter, you feel like it's a way to get back at them, make yourself feel better. <laughs> but it, it just always seems to make things worse, you know, at least in my experience. So, you know, I say the best thing to do is just wait till you, you've calmed down. And if you're going to say something, say it to their face, you know, in person. Uh, don't try to go behind their back with stuff and, uh, do, you know, do that sort of thing. It's just not very, it's just not a good way to be <laughs> in general. Uh, protecting your social media accounts. Keep the private info private. Uh, it's something everybody should do. You should go to Facebook, or Twitters, or Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, yeah, Twitter, <laughs> LinkedIn, Pinterest, whatever you're on. And I'm not saying you can't ever post stuff. You know, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying uh, if it's public, you have to be very careful because you don't know who might look for you, who might Google the stuff and, and see those things. Uh, on the other hand, I, I find that, like with my Facebook, I just set everything to where only my friends can see my posts, and then I just make sure that I don't just friend random people, you know, but I know everybody on my, my friends list, I know they're not going to, uh, <laughs> you know, try to uh, get me in trouble somehow or, or post anything inappropriate. You know, this is another thing to watch out for with Facebook. It wasn't really mentioned here, 
Uh, but if you're not careful how you set that up, uh, sometimes people can come in and, and like uh, post stuff to your wall. And people might look at that, and even though it's not you, you didn't post it. Uh, but they might infer, well, you must be okay with it. Uh, or you must, uh, you must agree with that if you let that person post that to your wall. So, again, it, uh, it's, it's hard to just have one rule uh, for everybody. But I think just in general to put the stuff in that, you know, set it to private, friends only. Uh, or if you, do, if you are posting it public, you know, of course, make, double check to make sure it's not going to come back to bite you. All right, uh, thanks for watching this. Hope you enjoyed it, got something out of it. Uh, please do ask a question, make a comment, and have a good day, and I'll see you next time.